Hello everybody and welcome back to the Speakeasy. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. I don't know what I did with my hat, but whatever. Where's my trucker hat? We have a particularly special wild turkey today. The uh, Wild Turkey Masters Keep 17 year. 17 year old bourbon. Making it the oldest bourbon currently in this bar. Yes. Well, oldest bourbon ever to be in this bar. Uh, second oldest whiskey. Third oldest whiskey. Yours is 17, 17. also? Yes. Okay, so we're good. 17 and what? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, this is 17 in six months. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um. Anyway, this is an Eddie Russell Master Steve. Okay. Mm. It's got his signature on it. Probably because Jimmy didn't want to put it on there. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so... Yeah, super excited to review this one, and uh, I memorized all the shit, so I guess I'm going to do this one. Yeah, it's a very special review. I'm, I'm going to take the reins on this one. It's probably not going to suck this time. <laughs> <laughs> You're better with whiskey. You're better uh, with words. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, so, the first weirdest thing about this whiskey is that even though it is 43.4% alcohol, it is actually essentially cask strength. They didn't water it down. They filtered it, which brought down the proof about 3%. Hmm. But this is basically what it came out of the cask at. So, this is batch one. They may be different, each batch. Um, they may be pulling different things, so different batches may taste different ways. This bottle runs about $200, and uh, honestly, I haven't had a lot of trouble finding most Master's Keep most of the time, although the one that's currently all over Kansas City anyway is actually their rye, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure is good, but I really wanted to start with a bourbon for my first Master's Keep bottle. I actually got this one at a steal for uh, about 100 bucks. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> it, it was actually uh, essentially made this way by mistake. So Wild Turkey ran out of room at their rick houses. And so they sent this one to age at Old Crow for a little while. Hmm. And it got stuck in a fucking basement. Oh. Not the best for aging whiskey. Even no. the place we just went brings in outside air just mm -hmm. for that exact reason. Also because they're in downtown KC and all their whiskey barrels would be gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice a, uh, a red square body <laughs> loading up whiskey barrels in the middle of the night, don't look at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they'll have a harder time proving which one of us it was. <laughs> they drove a red square body. Um, so, before I get too much deeper into that story, I want to taste the whiskey a little bit. It's not assaulting me as much as I expected, but that's because the only other whiskeys I've had this that were close to this age, bourbons anyway, are the George T. Stag and your uh, Jim Beam, which is sherry cask finish, so that mm -hmm. dominates. We may have screwed up a little bit already today. How so? Um... Oh, we started with cask strength whiskey earlier. <laughs> so this has... On the nose, the, the surprising thing for me was it has mostly wood notes on the nose. That's like almost mm -hmm. all I can get is wood notes. And then right on the front of the flavor, I get the wood notes and the leather. And then about middle to the back, I start to get that normal bourbon sweetness. And it's like, uh, dusty apples, almost. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Out of all the wild turkeys we've tried, uh, bourbons. Mm hmm I think this might be my least favorite. Yeah. Um, I... It, it's good, but it tastes like they forgot about it. 
<laughs> yeah. I just released it. Um, so, go ahead. But, that being said, if you wanted an expensive bottle of whiskey, and you're not super into whiskey, or you're just kind of starting out, but you got a little bit of cash to throw around, this would be perfect. This is a great beginner whiskey. It just sucks that it's, you know, 17 years old and... Yeah, um, 200 MSRP. Yeah, I think it's actually like 175 MSRP. Okay. Uh, you find it around here though for about two. Um, so they found they realized they had these barrels over in the old crew warehouse. They brought it over to the master keep warehouse, which is actually a smaller rick house, I should say, uh, which is actually a smaller rick house on the distillery grounds. And that's where they work on all their master's keep stuff. And then they let it age for the last, like, five to seven years there. And once they got done, Eddie figured, we'll run this through a, a chill filter process. Stick it in a bottle. And, um, a little disappointed. I'm definitely disappointed compared to what I hoped for. But I bet that's the problem with it. Hmm. Is it just chill filtered? Could have been. If they would have just like they chill filter most of their stuff though. One on one chill filtered. I believe. Unless it says non chill filtered on this label, their all their non chill filtered stuff is labeled as non chill filtered. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one's chill filtered. This is not. This is not. These two. Okay. It's not chill filtered. The rest of these are. I bet though that would have been that would have brought well, this up to That's not chill filtered. Long branch isn't chill filtered, it's fucking charcoal filtered. Ah. Yeah, it probably If you watch the Whiskey Tribe ever, they did an older video where they filtered some whiskey. Some cast Which... strength whiskey they had in their rick houses. Uh-huh. They used, like, Brita pitchers and stuff. They did. That was great. But it took a lot out of the whiskey. Mm -hmm. I think, at minimum, this would have been better had they not done that. But I intend to almost never pour this bottle, both because it is far from my favorite. And at this point, it's just more of a flex. Yeah. That I have it. That titty pop. Which is good because some of these other bottles got fucking holes in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 101's almost gone. The fucking Kentucky Spirit ain't even in the cabinet. That, bit, that bitch grew legs. <laughs> um, she, she was leaking, had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, resting up next to my chair upstairs. <laughs> um. Given price and what I expected from this, this is honestly like a five. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> buy it. I just expect... My expectations were high. Um, and it wasn't like one of those whiskeys where it got all hyped up to us. A lot of people don't talk real highly about Wild Turkey. Mm -mm. And so all the hype came from us. And it's still... It had every advantage just having this fucking turkey on the bottle coming to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm fairly disappointed in it. What really sucks is I got a taste of what I missed because the guy sent me home with a little vial, which is around here somewhere, with Wild Turkey's Master's Keeper Vival, which is a sherry cast finish. Wild Turkey. And that was some of the best whiskey I've ever tasted. <laughs> It's uh, probably over there somewhere, but that's all right. Yeah, that uh, that made it all the worse because I tried that the night before and then Yo. tried this with you and was like, oh, this is kind of a letdown. This, yeah, it's a good flex. It'd be a good flex just to have it. Um, it's like having a uh, Bentley or a uh, Rover. Don't drive, rover, Do drive the rover. Do not drive the rover if you got one. <laughs> yeah. You you're driving it long. Now, Rolls Royce, that's not a flex, that's just a damn good car. 
<laughs> or Toyota. I'd rather have Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could buy like 10 Toyota Tundras for what you're going to spend on the Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you just keep the other ones in the garage and when your first one actually bites the bus, the dust and... Or the bus, maybe you ran that bitch right into a school bus because you're just a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was a uh, KU campus bus and you're doing the world a favor. <laughs> um, not that he's putting any ideas in one particular person's mind. <laughs> um, don't talk about my dad that way. He's dead. Go ahead. Um, I built you now. You have to lay on now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you drive that one Toyota for like the next twenty years when it finally kicks, bites the dust. You just get a new one, because you got several. Yep. Alright, so, yeah. you gonna rate this bitch? <sighs> no. You're not even gonna give it a rating. I'm too sad about it. I, I, but you I, realize that means you're rating it lower than behind Bar's Whiskey. I'll go ahead and give it a five. <laughs> I'll give it a six, because I'm pretty sure we gave uh, McKenna a five? Yeah, but it's a four now. We adjusted our scale. Okay, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Solid five. What you can get from this is the uh, the notes. A cool bottle. Well, that. But you can you can you'll get different notes based on the age of the whiskey, and you'll get more bitter and wood forward notes in older whiskey it'll start turning to like leather instead of toffee and shit like that and uh that's definitely exemplified here but that's just yeah yes. i know why jimmy didn't put his name on the bottle <laughs> i thought something similar <laughs> nothing against eddie he well just... here's the problem right eddie's probably come up with good ideas but they probably still have jimmy's name on them <laughs> Jimmy's like, yeah, well, I agree with you, son. I taught this boy, I made this boy, this is mine. <laughs> Everything you do is mine, son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, till we see you again, I'm Zach. I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. <laughs> this is still better than our next review is going to be. <laughs> If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop us a comment, and check out our uh, Facebook page for daily updates.